to Andy Hillenberg, Jamie Moyle in the third row, Dion Hindi, Jeff Matrician, Matt Morrow, and Larry Reeks rounding out the field. Ladies and gentlemen, looking for green, and it's go time here at the Knoxville Raceway. Great start by Joe Gertie. Great start also by the 83 car. Danny Lasoski making his way to the top side. Here comes the dude. Running in second. Looking for the top spot. Gertie on the bottom. The dude up high. Who's got the momentum off turn four? Chuck it up to the Beef Packers. Danny Lasoski will lead lap number one. Joe Gertie settling into the number two spot now. Working the bottom side as Donnie Schatz and Andy Hillenburg continue up high. Travis Whitney in the fifth place spot right now. Following him is Jeff Matrician and Jamie Moyle. The dude looking to run away with the event makes his way off turn two now as the second, third, and fourth place cars start to bunch up. It's Andy Hillenberg down low. Joe Gertie and Donnie shots up high. Gertie holding on to that number two spot. Shots in third. Andy Hillenberg in fourth. A shot to the bottom. Andy Hillenberg now takes over the three spot, but only temporarily. Look at shots with the nice low line move off the of turn two. Four laps down, four to go, and the dude is running away with it now as Donnie Schatz makes a move back to the top side, sneaking back into the number three spot. Matricia in the 5J car, troubles. He has moved his way to the infield as Danny Lasoski has opened up more than a straightaway advantage. It goes Lasoski, Gertie, Schatz, and Hillenberg. Top four looking to move on to the A-Main tonight. Travis Whitney and Jamie Moyle battling it out right now for fifth as Dion Hindi, Matt Morrow, and Larry Weeks make up the rest of the field. As Danny Lasoski makes his way off turn four, big white flag in hand and one lap car in the form of Larry Weeks. Danny Lasoski is out and away. Gertie holding on to that number two spot in the Gata Race 8H, the 15 car of Donnie Schatz in third. Andy Hillenberg looking to be the fourth qualified car is off turn four. Here comes Danny the dude, the Soski, the Beef Packers 83 will win racing champions heat race number one. Meanwhile, here comes Joe Gertie, Donnie Schatz, and Andy Hillenberg, the top four cars that will move on to tonight's A Main as Travis Whitney. Pittman the front row, then it's Dale Blaney, Skip Jackson, Terry McCarl, Manny Rockhold, Tony Norum, Brent Antill, Travis Cram, and Jerry Crabb ready to go. And we are underway. Three car battle into turn one. Dale Blaney trying to come from the second row to take the lead through turns one and two. Can't get the job done. He slips up into second. Now Pittman with the momentum on the high side tries to take over that second spot. Skip Jackson on the bubble as the top four head for the cushion off four. Here's Jackson moving to the inside of Darren Pittman. He'll slide up into the third position with the Jets of Construction 55 car. Terry McCarl currently in fifth trying to make up ground as he wants to get that car qualified for tonight's A-Main. Your leader, Jeff Swindell. McCarl getting some momentum off the bottom side of turn four. Charges down low into one. He'll put the slide job on Darren Pittman. Darren trying to come back on the inside. Can't get it done. And Terry McCarl now rides fourth. Terry found a bite on the bottom side the last time around off three and four. He's down there once again as Pittman tries to make up the position on the high side. Travis Cram started at the back of the field. He's trying to get up and get qualified. He's currently sixth in the Budweiser car number 12. Your leader is still the 104 plus octane boost car of Jeff Swindell. Dale Blaney riding second in the Amico 93. Then it's the Jensen Construction 55 of Skip Jackson. Four laps down, four to go. As your top four equidistant on the back straightaway now. Everybody runs the high side except for McCarl. He likes that bottom groove in three and four. Trying to make up some distance on Skip. McCarl still about eight tenths of a second behind Skip Jackson, but he's closing ground steadily. Trying to get into that third spot.
We'll be looking for a white flag this time around. Jeff Swindell looking strong in the 104 plus octane boost off the high side of four. He's got one lap to go to pick up a racing champions heat race win here tonight. Dale Blaney chasing him in second. Skip Jackson running third. Then it's Terry McCarl. Darren Pittman is going to have to try to come out of the B here tonight in the 21 car. So is Brent Ansell, Travis Cram, Manny Rock holding the rest of the field. Heat race number two goes to Jeff Swindell. Second is Dale Blaney, third, Skip Jackson, fourth, goes to McCarl in the 24 car. Couple of Knoxville regulars, including last week's winner on the front row of the third racing champions heat race, Kerry Matson and Don Drow Jr. now begin to pick up the pace. Starter Doug Clark waves the green flag and we are underway. Matson out to the early lead. Look at Mark Kinzer working the middle side of the speedway. Whitworth on the bottom, Don Drow Jr. on the top and Drow takes over second off of turn number two. Breezy Whitworth down to the bottom, now gonna try to slide up, take the cushion away from Don Drowd. And Breezy Whitworth moves the Midwest Motorsports 96 into second. Don Drowd right back onto the bottom in turn number one. And he slides up in front of Whitworth. Whitworth tries the diamond off the corner. They're side by side down the back straightaway, a battle for second. Down to the stripe they come. Kerry Madsen out in front by about nine tenths of a second. Don Trow Jr. running in second. Mark Kinzer on the bottom of the speedway in the work in Williams Durst 5M. He moves by Whitworth into third. Kerry Madsen extending his lead. Nearly a second and a half over Don Trow Jr. Mark Kinzer running in third. Scott Whitworth fourth. Problems for Dennis Moore Jr. The motor just let go on that machine. Flag flies for real. Don Trout Jr. down to the bottom now, tries to slide up, can't make the pass on leader Kerry Matson. Bob Weave on the move in the McCroskey Chevrolet number 19W, he's up to fourth and that is a transfer position. Mark Kinzer ducks to the inside in three and four, slides up, takes the top groove away from Don Trout Jr. Kinzer is up to second. Trout tries to come back at it, but Mark Kinzer holds the bottom line. Scott Whitworth on the cushion now trying to reclaim the final transfer spot from Bob Weave. Don Trout Jr. side by side with Mark Kinzer in a battle for second. Great racing behind leader Kerry Matson. Now Mark Kinzer down to the bottom, slides back out towards the top side of the speedway, takes second again away from Don Trout Jr. But Trout powers away on the cushion off of turn two. Again, Kinzer down to the bottom, slides up and takes the cushion away. And this time, the current Pennzoil World of Outlaws points leader is up to second. Scott Whitworth now back to fourth and closing in on Don Trout Jr. for third as Doug Clark waves the white flag. Two and a half seconds the advantage for Kerry Matson over Mark Kinzer. Bob Weave wades down on the bottom side of the speedway trying to grab that final transfer spot back from Scott Whitworth. Can't get the job done in one and two. Meanwhile, turn number four down the front straightaway. Kerry Matson picking up the win. Mark Kinzer holds on for second. Don Drow Jr. is third. Scott Whitworth takes the fourth and final transfer spot, followed by Bob Weave. Lee Nelson into tonight's feature event. John Kearney is going to bring him to the white line in turn number four. We're going to look for green. Getting closer. We're racing. Carney to the cushion, Delansky to the bottom. Craig Delansky works turn number two into the lead. John Carney now works second. Stevie Smith third. Here comes Tyler Walker now fourth. Walker to the bottom side of Stevie Smith in three and four. Slides up to the cushion, trying to block Smith. Still wheel to wheel down the front chute, racing toward turn one. That's where your race is going on for third. Tyler Walker now works the bottom side and slides high in front of Smith for third. Here comes Smith back to challenge into turn three. Stevie Smith now working in the third spot. Tyler Walker fourth, bucks the front, wheels off turn number four. Trying to get a good run. Stevie Smith one more time. You've got a Jim Dandy race for third. 
Elk River, Minnesota as Craig Delansky showing the way into turn three and four. John Carney second. Now Walker closing on second spot of John Carney. Walker to the bottom side of four one more time. Gets a good run off the low line. Stevie Smith still running in that fourth and final transfer. Has now Greg Hodden up to challenge Brooke Tadnell. Slides up to the cushion. Tries to shut the door, but no doing. Brooke Tadnell hanging on to that fifth spot. Hodden again dives to the bottom in the middle of the groove. Tyler Walker now takes a look at John Carney through one and two. And Stevie Smith also up to challenge on the cushion. Wall Raven now moves around Greg Hodden and now taking a look at Brooke Tadnell. The ethanol, 56 on the move. Wheel to wheel with Brooke Tadnell on the turn one. It's Tyler Walker challenging John Carney, tries to make his move but no doing. Carney stands on the go pedal off the high side of two. Side by side, racing through turn number four. Tyler Walker and John Carney dueling it out. Lap number six in the books. Craig Delansky's got the cruise control set down into turn three. Tyler Walker now moves into the number two position in that air step. Walker Engineering, car number 35. White flag, this time by for Craig Delansky. Stevie Smith also challenging for third is Chris Wallraven now in the hat for the final transfer. His time's running out. Wallraven works the low on the speedway. Right now, Stevie Smith is not going to the feature. Wallraven working the third spot now. Fourth is up for grabs. Checker flag. Craig Delansky, second Tyler Walker, third. Chris Wallraven in fourth is John Carney. Has been one of the 50 50 drawings, so. Those of you that didn't win, we're sorry. Better luck next time. Thanks for contributing. Get set to go with your 10 lap C main for the corn growers. Ladies and gentlemen, Randy Anderson starts him off. Two cars will transfer on into the feature. Randy Anderson and Matt Morrow working one and two. Here comes Bullet Bob Weave now up into third. Tony Noel fourth. Morrow goes to the high side as Weave ducks low. Three, one, up to number four. Anderson shuts the door on Morrow as he works the high side. Now shutting the door on Weave. Matt Morrow taking advantage of the race side by side. Off to number two, drag racing down the back chute. The top two cars will transfer Matt Morrow working the high side trying to take the lead. The Midwest Radiator AC Delco car number two and is your leader. Holy cow, Matt Morrow stepping hard on the go pedal. Bob Weave now works second. Randy Anderson now falls back to fourth. You've got a new leader, Bob Weave. But Morrow ducks back to the bottom side, not happy with second. Working, working the low line is Matt Morrow. Your leader, leader is Bob Weave. Tony Norm also challenging Matt Morrow for second as two cars will transfer. Randy Anderson now back to fourth. Brian Grimes is fifth. Here comes Tony Norm like a bullet out of a gun into second. Tony Norm working the second spot now. Matt Morrow back to third. Bob Weave from Newton, Iowa in the Wagner landscaping car number 19. W working into turn three. He's your race leader. Tony Norm now working second in that Twister chassis 45. Matt Morrow third. Randy Anderson fourth. Now Brian Grimes at the challenge for fourth. Doug Clark, your official starter, working toward the orange cone located on the front chute. Bob Weave brings them off high. We're green. Tony Norum ducks to the bottom side, takes over the lead. Here comes Matt Morrow. Holy cow, they were close off too. Bob Weave works back into second. Morrow hangs on to third. Tony Norm now works the lead in the Twister Chassis GD Graphics 45, showing him the way on the high side. Weave now taking a look on the long line of the speedway, wheel to wheel through two. Drag racing down the back, shooting to turn three. Bob Weave works the bottom side of turn three. 
Norm up on the cushion. Leaves now the leader, but Norm ducks back to the middle of the track. Tries to get a good run down the front. She's into the turn. Now takes over that number one spot again. Flip flop go the leaders. Tony Norm now takes over the number one spot. Two cars transfer his weave one more time. Taking a look at Norm. Through turn one and two. Down the back sheet, Norm hanging on to that top spot. Weave still running second. Two cars will transfer this time by. The white flag will be out one more time around for Tony Norm. Norm now starts to extend his lead for the final time down the back chute. Weave your final transfer running second. Off turn number four, the double checkers are going to wave for your winner, Tony Norum. Running second goes to the 19W of Bob Weed. Third, the 2M of Matt Morrow. Fourth, the 6B of Brian Grimes. Fifth, the 17 of Chad Smith. Sixth, Dude. Skip. Five laps the distance, channel lock dash. Headed to the white line. Doug Clark has a look at him. And we are underway. Child takes into the high groove. There's Johnny Herrera on the inside. He's looking to repeat his victory in the channel lock dash that he had last night. Hottenschild taking a look on the inside. Can't do it there. Sammy on the inside of Steve Kinzer. Now on the inside of Jack looking for second. Sammy Swindell on the move in the one car. Your leader is Johnny Herrera. The channel lock one of Sammy Swindell on the inside. Hottenschild with a shot off the high side. From the high side to the low side, back up top, the Pennzoil 22 of Jack Hottenshaw working on Sammy Swindell. Steve Kinzer sitting in fourth, and it's the dude, Danny Lasaski, followed by Skip Jackson. Here comes Hottenshaw to the inside, slams the door on Sammy Swindell into three. What a move by Hottenshaw. Now Kinzer up to challenge Swindell. Herrera as he did last night. Walking away from the field in the channel lock dash, he's looking to make it two in a row here at the Knoxville Raceway. Johnny Herrera on the fly, white flag, one to go. Sammy trying to close in on Jack Hottenschild for that second spot. As they came very close to getting together a couple laps back into three, Picking up the win, Channel Lock Dash here tonight in the Iowa Ethanol Classic will be the Casey's General Store 47 of Johnny Herrera. Second goes to Jack Hottenshield, third to Sammy Swindell, fourth to Steve Kinzer, fifth to Danny Lasoski, and Skip Jackson comes home sixth. With our Channel Lock Dash winner, two nights in a row, Channel Lock Dash wins for you, Johnny Herrera, and you'll be starting on the pole again this evening. What's it going to take to hold him off for 25 laps? Well, I'll tell you, you have to have a hard enough tire on to go the distance, it looks like. And, uh, you know, just uh, the, I think the bottom's going to come in here a little bit later, about halfway through the feature, the way it looks. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can hold them off and get, you know, get a good start in the, in the feature and hold them off for 25 laps. When the track gets as wide as it's gotten here tonight, how much does experience play a part of the racing here at Knoxville Raceway? You, of course, you were a former track champion here. We saw Danny Lasoski get the Viver and Fast Time Award, both of you guys with a lot of laps around this half mile. Well, I'll tell you, that does help a little bit. You know, I, I do have a lot of laps, and Lasoski has a lot of laps. But uh, when it gets slick like this, you can see a lot better racing. Uh, you know, you're going to see some, you know, I think you'll be able to pass a little bit more. A guy can start further back and move up to the front the way the racetrack is tonight. Looking ahead to the second A main this evening, assuming you're finishing up in front of the, of the first feature, you're going to have to come from the back of the pack for the second one. What's it going to take to do that? Well, like I said, the racetrack's a lot wider tonight, so a guy can be able to do that, but uh, your guy's going to have to have his car pretty good, and if it starts taking rubber, it's going to be awful tough to come from the back of that second one. And I don't, I mean, uh, you can see it's pretty obvious. If you start in the back of a, the regular feature, it's hard to come to the front, so it ought to be exciting. All right, Johnny, let's break. We'll give away some good stuff. All right, getting set to go, 12 laps the distance. Top four cars will transfer on into the feature. Marlon Jones and Darren Pittman sitting on the front row. Marlon Jones is gonna set the pace in the Billion Automotive 6B. Doug Clark, Sioux Falls, South Dakota waves the green, we're racing. Three wide. 
side into turn number one. Look at him go. Stevie Smith to the high side. Darren Pittman works the cushion. Marlon Jones to the left side of Stevie Smith into turn three. Sit on the edge of your seat for this one. The Ingersoll ran. Car number 19. Stevie Smith still works the high side. Is your race leader. Marlon Jones working the bottom of turn two, running second. Darren Pittman third. Here comes Travis Whitney and Brooke Tatnell. Whitney taking a look at Pittman side by side through three and four. Whitney works the bottom side of turn number four. Pittman still up on the cushion in the up front calling cards. Car number 21. Stevie Smith working down the back shoot to race leader. Marlon Jones still running second. Third is Whitney. Now Brooke Tadnell up to challenge Darren Pittman for fourth. Brooke Tatnell now works the fourth spot. Pitney. Pittman. <laughs> Darren Pittman backing down the back chute. The top four cars will transfer. Brooke Tatnell now working the fourth spot. Travis Whitney running third. Marlon Jones works second. Jim leader, leader down the back sheet right now is Stevie Smith. Greg Hodden now up on the move, works around. Darren Pittman working on Manny Rockhold for the fifth spot. Greg Hodden, that vibrant. Still Michelle, 11H now up to six. Check that fifth. Four cars will transfer. Hodden at one spot away. Working the high side of turn two. Trying to reel in Brooke Tadnell. We're halfway. Six down, six to go. Greg Hodden reeled him in. The four cars will transfer. Tadnell the bottom side. Hodden now up on the cushion of turn two. You race now for the final transfer down the back shoe. Greg Hodden gets a good run. Look at him go through three. Hot and attack the wheel to wheel down the front sheet into the turn. Who's it gonna be? Right now, Greg Hodden has the edge into turn two. Slides up, bangs off the cushion down the back shoe. Greg Hodden now works into that fourth and final transfer. Tat now works in the fifth spot. Manny Rockhold, six. Stevie Smith, your leader, now running into turn number three. Getting close to traffic. We'll see how that plays out. Marlon Jones still working second. 1.4 seconds behind your leader. Stevie Smith now reeling in traffic. Keep your eye on the battle up front. Brooke Tatnell trying to charge on Greg Hodden and doing so in turn three. Now onto the scoreboard. Bumper to bumper off turn number four. That's where your battle is for the final transfer. Marlon Jones also starting to close on your race leader. Stevie Smith is at work in traffic off four. The white flag is out one more time for Stevie Smith. If Marlon Jones wants it, he's going to have to come and get it. And now he ducks to the other side, taking a look at Stevie Smith through two. Brooke Tadnell also up the challenge for the fourth and final transfer. They race through two. Now you race for the lead off four. Look toward turn four. Jones to the bottom side. Jerry Grace down the front shoot. You win her. Marlon Jones. Holy cow, ladies and gentlemen. That was a Jim Dandy. Woo. The Iowa Ethanol Pace Car and the World of Outlaws Pace Truck pulled to the infield. Johnny Herrera on the pole. Jack Hodden Shielder is outside. Iowa Ethanol Classic getting ready to tear it up here at the Knoxville Raceway. Race fans, let's get ready to rumble! Johnny Herrera slides it up to the high side. Here comes Hoddenshield. Sammy Swindell like a rocket off the bottom side. Who's going to lead lap one? It looks like it's going to be the Casey's General Store 47 of Johnny Herrera. Hoddenshield slips into second. Then it's Sammy Swindell. Steve Kinzer. Danny Lasoski is fifth. Stevie Smith working the cushion. Back up front. Hoddenshield has a run on Herrera. 
Jack takes a look on the inside, nothing doing there. He'll put it back up on the cushion off four. Swindell charging on the inside as well, running in the third spot. Here's Sammy now, making a bit of the inside of Jack Hodenshield, looking for second. Stevie Smith on the high side, takes over fourth from Steve Kinzer. Stevie Smith had a little track experience just moments ago in the B, he's putting it to work. Hodenshield will make a charge the inside of Herrera in one. Jack Hodenshield, your new leader. Herrera trying to fight back in second. Dale Blaney is on the charge. He's up to fifth in the Amico 93. Your leader, leader, leader is Jack Hodenshield in the Pennzoil 22. Sammy is third. Blaney taking a look on the inside of Smith, looking for fourth. Kinzer and Lasoski swapping the sixth spot back and forth down the back straightaway. Kinzer, Steve Kinzer and Danny Lasoski battling for position number six, racing through one and two. Mark Kinzer rides eight, currently ninth as Donnie Schatz as Danny Lasoski on the inside of Steve Kinzer takes over the sixth spot in turn three. Good racing mid-pack as Jeff Swindell using the middle groove, gets around Skip Jackson, now he's on the high side of Scott Whitworth. Jeff Swindell may have found a new move, a new groove on the racetrack. Back up front now, Sammy Swindell going to work on Johnny Herrera. Swindell on the inside, takes over second on the front stretch. Sammy Swindell now rides second. Now it's Dale Blaney again taking a look at Stevie Smith. Stevie has a run on the high side of Herrera. Smith racing Johnny Herrera for third. Dale Blaney right there as well. It's a three-car battle off four. Stevie Smith on the high side now runs toward the Ingersoll Rand 19 car. Lap traffic up ahead for Jack Hottenshield as they go down the back stretch. Mark Kinzer in the infield with the 5M car. Kinzer taking the 5M to the pits. He won't be in the invert for feature number two. Here is Hottenshield up to the cushion. Sammy closing ground. Currently 1.3 seconds behind your leader. Hottenshield into traffic now, working the high side of Travis Whitney off turn four. Danny Lasoski closing on Johnny Herrera. Back up front as we work through one and two. Now your race is for the lead. Sammy Swindell on the inside of Jack Hottenshield. Sammy makes a bid, slides up to the high side, is now about five car lengths behind Jack as they head into three. Coming around to score lap number 11 this time, Hottenshield right behind the lap car of Travis Whitney. Jack drifting up to the high side. Sammy charging down low. They'll come off turn two nearly side by side as Hottenshield negotiates his way around Travis Whitney into three. Stevie Smith running third and closing quickly. Dale Blaney up to fourth. The Amico 93 having a strong run in this first feature here tonight. Terry McCall spins the 24 car up on the berm in turn two and that'll bring out the caution. It's a good one so far in the Iowa Ethanol Classic. Green flags back out, we're back to racing. Sammy dives the inside of the lap car of Travis Whitney. Blaney trying to make a move on Stevie Smith in one and two, can't get the job done. They're three wide racing mid-pack. Breezy Whitworth making a charge. Breezy on the move. Sammy, or make that Dale Blaney up in the infield there as he made his move off four. Steve Kinzer closing in to challenge Blaney for the fourth spot. Lasoski is riding in sixth. Breezy Whitworth up to seven in the 96 car. Whitworth on the charge at the bottom. Now Herrera fighting back to the outside of Breezy Whitworth into turn one. Johnny Herrera in the Casey's 47 car regains that seventh spot. As back up front, the race for the lead closes in once again. Sammy Swindell within four car lengths of Jack Hottenshield in one. Sammy right on the back bumper of Jack down the back straightaway. Here's Swindell looking up to the cushion. Is there anything up there? 
loses some ground on turn four, so Sammy will go right back to work down the inside. Now, Hodenshield up to the cushion, bounces off Fitton, holds on the lead down the back straightaway. Stevie Smith trying to reel him in. And now Lasoski closing in on Steve Kinzer. Dale Blaney trying to regain that power he has before the yellow. As now Lasoski closes in on Kinzer. Your battle is for fifth down the back straightaway. The dude in the Beef Packers 83 car working on Kinzer as Steve gets up on the berm and bounces the front end high in the air off four. Now Sammy with a charge on the inside down the back straightaway. Swindell up to make his move on Hodenshield, tries the high side. Stevie Smith is working up there as well, but Hodenshield has the bite on the bottom off four. Laps winding down, we'll score lap number 20 next time around. Here's Sammy now, once again has a run on Hodenshield down the back stretch. He'll take it to the inside this time. Stevie Smith also closing in the Ingersoll Rand 19 car. It's going to be a three car battle for the final five laps. Sammy Swindell on the inside takes the lead from Jack Hodenshield. Your new leader, the Channel Lock 1 car of Sammy Swindell. Stevie Smith trying to close quickly in the Ingersoll Rand 19 car. Four to go as they'll start working traffic this time. It's the 24 car of Terry McCall right down in Sammy Swindell's groove. Swindell opening up a lead now on Hot Shield as Danny Lasoski begins to show some strength. He's up to fourth in the 83 car. Lap traffic now will pose the challenge for Sammy Swindell. Stevie Smith riding the cushion up where nobody else is running. Let's see if it pays off for him in the 19. Swindell puts it in the middle groove. This time by, we've got two laps to go. Here comes the wild child. Jack Hodenshield on the inside has the lead at the stripe with two to go. Now Danny Lasoski is on the move. Here comes Lasoski all the way up to second. Danny Lasoski, the man on the fly, white flag coming out, one to go. One left to go, it's a four car battle for the lead. Lasoski has a run, gets a little sideways. Smith on the high side, Swindell down low. They split Lasoski through two. Now Stevie will try to make a run on Hod in three and four. Not gonna get the job done. Fourth World of Outlaw victory in Knoxville for 1998 to Jack Hodenshield. Second goes to Stevie Smith, third Sammy Swindell, fourth is Danny Lasoski, and fifth to Johnny Herrera. Well, Jack Hodenshild, as far as points races are concerned with the Pennzoil World of Outlaws, you're undefeated here at the Knoxville Raceway. Yeah, the, the Eldon race car has gone real fast, and the mass, Maxim chassis are working good for us this year. And, uh, uh, you know, the crew guys are doing a good job, and the car's fast. We've got the fair race coming up, and then the Amico Knoxville Nationals. Any extra pressure on you now that you're undefeated? <laughs> well, uh, you know, not really. I don't feel too pressured any time. Uh, uh, the car is just, hopefully we can keep the car... Uh, uh, going as good as we've been keeping it going and uh, uh, run up front. How do you explain all the success since you came back from the, sh from the shoulder injury? No worse than fourth place, uh, about six victories I think so far. What's made it all happen? Well, we, uh, you know, our crew guys, uh, we got uh, Dean Burns working on the car and Dave Kennard and uh, Chris and, uh, you know, they just all three work good together and, uh, uh, you know, Jack Eldon uh, gives me uh, all the best stuff that you can buy. All right, race fans, put your hands together for the winner of the first 25-lap A-Main event, the wild child, Jack Hoddenschild. Pace vehicles into the infield. We go racing at the chalk stripe in turn number four. 
Terry McCarl and Marlon Jones, Craig Delansky and Chris Walraven, Kerry Matson and John Carney, Greg Hudnett, Don Trout, Skip Jackson, Jeff Swindell, Tyler Walker, Joe Gertie, Indy Hillenburg, Donnie Schatz, Breezy Whitworth and Steve Kinzer. 25 laps, $10,000 to the winner. And again, the green flag waves. McCarl out in front, Marlon Jones holding down second with Chris Wallwave in third and Craig Delansky fourth as they work their way down the back straightaway. Jeff Swindell taking a look at the top side of the speedway, battling it out with Tyler Walker down the front stretch. Greg Delansky way up high and wide off of corner number two, pulls it back down onto the racing groove. It's McCarl, Marlon Jones, Chris Walraven, Kerry Masson up to fourth, Delansky is fifth, followed by Greg Hudnett in sixth, seventh spot, belongs to the 104 plus of Jeff Swindell. Swindell trying to split the cars, not quite able to make the pass off of corner number two. Stevie Smith working the outside of the speedway as well, gaining positions toward the back of the pack. McCarl with a nine-tenths of a second advantage as he crosses the stripe. Andy Hillenberg moving forward in the Rush Truck Center's number two. He's working the bottom side of the speedway, battling it out with Jeff Swindell for sixth. John Trow Jr. working the cushion through one and two. Can't get a run on a 55 of Skip Jackson. Ricardo and Marlon Jones breaking away from the rest of the pack. Four wide on the front stretch. Don Trow Jr., Skip Jackson. Craig Delansky and Steve Kins are the cars that were four wide coming off the corner. Andy Hillenberg makes his way around Chris Walraven. He's up to fifth. Jeff Swindell trying to work the cushion off a of turn number two to take sixth away from the ethanol 56. Hillenberg a little loose coming off a of corner number four, gathers it back up. Trouble coming off of turn number two, car getting sideways. John Carney sideways off of corner number four. Some contact made back there in the pack. Caution flag waves, seven laps in the books. Terry McCarl creeping off the turn number four, now jumps on the loud pedal and the green flag flies. Jeff Swindell going up to the top side of the speedway in the 104 plus octane boost machine and Jeff Swindell is up to third. Meanwhile, challenge for the lead there in turn number three. Marlon Jones looks to the inside, can't make a move on Terry McCarl. Steve Kinzer in the Quaker State number 11 up to third, powering off the top of turn number four. Kinzer working the cushion now, has his sights set on the brilliant automotive number six of Marlon Jones. Kins are up to the top side again in three and four. Marlon Jones holding down the bottom and Terry McCarl working the middle. Steve Kinzer is up to second. He wants the lead from Terry McCarl. New leader up at turn number two, the king of the outlaws, Steve Kinzer in the Quaker State number 11 out in front. Kinzer all the way up from the 16th starting spot takes the lead. Marlon Jones now with a challenge for second on the inside of Terry McCarl. Steve Kinzer pulling away as Marlon Jones grabs second at the stripe. Kinzer with 2.2 seconds advantage over Marlon Jones. Stevie Smith working the outside of the speedway now races around Greg Hotnet and gets up to seventh. Hillenberg, meanwhile, ducks to the inside of the McCroskey 24 of Terry McCarl. 
and the pilot from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, is up to third. Jeff Swindell now fourth. Steve Kinzer finding something on the top side of the Knoxville Raceway. He picked up the win last Sunday evening at the Eagle Nationals over in Nebraska. Marlon Jones second, Andy Hillenberg third. Jeff Swindell is fourth, and now Craig Delansky battling with Perry McCarl for the fifth spot. Now Delansky taking over fifth. Here comes Stevie Smith on the bottom side of the speedway. Slides out, takes the groove away from Craig Delansky. The Ingersoll ran number 19 is running in the fifth spot. Kims are now working the lap traffic, about to put Travis Whitney a lap in the rear. Kinzer again stretching out the advantage. 17 laps in the books. Kinzer with 2.2 seconds ahead of Marlon Jones, Andy Hillenberg, Jeff Swindell, and Stevie Smith. Nineteen laps in the books, six more to go, and Steve Kinzer on his way to a $10,000 payday at the Iowa Ethanol Classic. Kinzer brings the Quaker State number 11 off of corner number 4, crosses the stripe, four more laps to go, and we'll turn the microphone over to Tony Bothoven. Steve Kinzer working traffic over in turn number 2, taking him down the back chute. Marlon Jones still working second as Andy Hillenberg third. Jeff Swindell fourth, Stevie Smith fifth. Craig Delansky working sixth. Steve Kinzer, your leader, working in traffic through turn number 1. Comes up behind Donnie Schott. Riding up on the cushion. Sammy Swindell now closing on Terry McCarl, who takes the one to the bottom side of Craig Delansky. Three wide in turn two. Sammy Swindell now wheel to wheel with Terry McCarl. He ducks to the bottom side of three. McCarl shuts the door. Terry McCarl working on Sammy Swindell. Now Greg hides it to the bottom side of Daniel Osaski. Your leader, leader of turn number four, Steve Kinzer. Now it looks to the high side as the white flag is out. One more time around for the King. A half mile to go. Marlon Jones still working second. Andy Hilmer now closing on Jones for the second spot. This time all turn number four cash the check for 10,000. It's Steve Kinzer. Running second. Holy cow, I didn't, could, couldn't call that one, folks. Well, Steve Kinzer, a $10,000 check for picking up the second 25-lap A main at the Iowa Ethanol Classic. You're involved in a very tight points race, a points race that got even tighter after the first A main. 
How much of how much of is how much of it is uh, a lot less pressure to come out here and run just for the money with no points being on the line? Oh, I don't know if there's any less pressure or not. You know, we made some changes in the car and they, it helped the car a lot. And uh, I mean, uh, right now you just got to be uh, smarter in this race car, and right? I'm having a little trouble doing that sometimes. So uh, uh, we've got a good crew that works and gives me a good car and never falls out from beneath me and stuff. But uh, you know, I'm just going to figure out what to do this thing all the times and. It was pretty nice. It gave us a little extra shot before coming to the Nationals to make some chassis changes, and uh, it seemed to help, so we'll see what happens uh, when we come back. You came from the 16th starting spot and took the lead on lap number nine. Any kind of practice in that for the heat races where you'll have to start toward the tail if you qualify well at the Amico Knoxville Nationals? Well, that's just something that always happens. It's, uh, it's part of it, so uh, we'll just see what happens. Uh, it'll be another day, another week. All right, race fans, Steve Kinzer in the Quaker State number 11 picking up the win of the second Iowa Ethanol Classic feature.